What's up guys? Thanks for stopping back by the channel. The Auto Shop Life, hanging out with me, Jim, JRC54. So do a quick comparison video, snap-ons, new brushless stuff in the 14.4 line is in. And we're going to do a comparison on the older CTPP761 compared to the new brushless CTPP861. Check it out. Shut up and sit down. Alright guys, so I want to start this video out by saying, you know, there's not a whole lot of snap-on tools that I end up getting that I dislike, but if I had to pick one snap-on tool, especially one snap-on tool in the 14-4 line that I just despise and hate the most, it's got to be the 761, you know, grinder. I'm sure you got, most of you guys know, you know, this one you know i can't call it a terrible design because you know the body seems fine i like the trigger I, you know I, I like the way it feels in the hand obviously the batteries you guys know how i feel about the batteries but this thing in general the amount of work that this gun puts out it just can't keep up you know you guys using them out there you know this is actually my second one i've probably had been using this about two years this is my second one the first one only lasted six months this one has been okay so far and i've been putting it through the ringer i mean i've gotten this thing you know, so hot, you know, you overwork these things, they get so hot that you could barely hold them. I mean, you basically got to like choke down on the handle because, you know, back by the motor, it gets so hot, you can't even hold them. And it does shut down. You know, I, I feel like the insides are melted. It smells bad. You could tell, you know, that's with any brushed gun or brushed motor, you know, obviously the smell. And that's one thing that I've known to appreciate over time. Using brushless, I'm not catching that smell. And I don't know if you guys are noticing that, but then you go back to you know, your brushed motor gun and, you know, hit the trigger, you know, just, just smelling it, smelling the electric. I noticed, you know, some of the handheld rashes I got, you know, get dirt and cooling inside the motor and all that stuff. And then after they sit or when I clean them off, maybe water will get in there or dirty water will get in there. And when you go to use them the next time, I mean, you smell it. So that's one thing I'll give this, you know, I can't say it's, you know, a head to head comparison because obviously brushless motor as opposed to a brush motor design or their older design compared to the newer design. But I've been using this new one for two days now. And, you know, the first day I used it for everything. I was using it for everything. I did a couple brake jobs with it, cleaned the gasket with it. I've been using just pretty much these cookies on it so far just to kind of get a feel for it. Um, I probably use these 3M Rolox probably the least amount at the shop. I usually use the, uh, you know, the more abrasive ones or even the rubber wheels and things like that. But I haven't got any, you know, down to using the bigger disc ones or you know, the sandpaper ones that I like to use. Um, but for the most part, it definitely seems nice. Now, I mean, in comparison, you guys can see, and we'll dive down into the workstation, um, maybe get some exact measurements, but, you know, just laying them side by side, you can see the brush one is a little bit taller. So you can see, you know, the anvil sticks out. They're both pretty much the same. Um, the handle setup is a little different. You guys can see probably, you know, feels about the same in the hand. So it's not like they make them any thicker. But, uh, you know, holding in the hand, it definitely got the same feel to it. The trigger's pretty much exactly the same. You know, the things I do like about the body on this one, they did carry over to the brushless one. So in comparison... You know, they both do have still the speed rating, which is uh, 3,500 to 15,000 RPMs. They do have the, you know, setting one and two, obviously one being the 35, two being the higher RPMs. Um, you know, I mean, that's pretty much physical capabilities. That's pretty much that. It's still the red plastic with the, you know, rubberized, you know, texture all around it. This one does have a new locking design on it to where, you know, you don't need two ratchets or whatever if you are using this with the buffer wheel or anything like that, you know, I'm sure most of you guys out there are using this as grinders like I am, you know, cleaning hubs, things like that. I'm not running around buffing things with this. I'm still not sure why they call it a polisher slash buffer. You know, it, it, it's pretty much a grinder to me. But, you know, other guys in other industries might use it for different reasons or whatever you could put on the end of this and get the job done with. That's fine. But I mostly use it for this. Still got the locking trigger here. You know, you can lock the trigger to where you can't hit it, unlock it. It still has the little battery gauge on the side. You know, yellow being fully charged or green being fully charged, then it turns into yellow and then orange and then red when you got a dead battery. Um, 
Haven't, haven't had it long enough to know battery performance on it yet. I'm hoping batteries do obviously last a little bit longer being a brushless design because the battery on this one, just another thing on the list that I, I can't stand with this one. I, I was excited to find out that the Snap-on guy pulled up with this or these were coming out. I'm sure you guys are excited about it. I can't wait to, to get them all. They do have the brushless 14-4 uh, come in, in the screw gun, the drill, I'm sure you guys can't wait till the 761, you know, 3H comes out in brushless. You know, I'll be waiting for it. And you guys better believe I will be picking them up on the channel. We will be checking them out. I will be using them to shop and review them for you guys thinking about getting them. But we'll dive down, get some close-ups of these. I'm sure most of you guys know, it's either watching this video or want to know about the brushless. You're looking to replace this or, you know, you know this one's pretty much garbage and, you know, don't buy it. That's pretty much what I'd have to say about this one. But we'll dive down and show you guys some close-ups of these. Check it out. All right, guys, so getting to it here, here they are together side by side. Um, you know, before we get into that, I did buy the kit for this. Um, they do sell it as a bare tool. I tend to just buy the kits. You know, I could always use the batteries and, and things like that. And, you know, it never hurts having another charger laying around. Um, I still have, you know, the pads and things that came with the uh, 761 version. It's still in the bag you know i've never really used the pads or anything like that the buffing wheel whatever whatever else comes from but it does come with the little uh 3m quick disc you know with the adapter to screw it on there on the front of it on the front of it here if you guys are catching that uh number on the kit is ctpp 861k2 so this kit does come with the charger the two batteries all the pads and then you know the quick roll lock uh disconnect with a little uh you know wrench bar that comes in there you know great little kit a little over 400 bucks i want to say you guys can't quote me on the prices like i say when i'm when i'm on these trucks i uh you know different dealers are going to give you different prices so i don't really ever know the price um you know not that i don't want to share you guys the price but i don't remember i could probably go i think it was like 425 or something like that but you know snap on franchisees may differ if you guys are looking for it you could always get the bear tool for i'm sure a lot cheaper but uh, looking at them side by side, like I said, the brushless one, you know, definitely a little bigger in comparison. They pretty much kept most things the same. And like I said, things that I do like about it, you know, as the gauge went, even went out on this, so I can't even tell where the battery's at. You can see, you know, that one lights up, full charge battery. These batteries are both fully charged. It's just this one, I'm using the uh, 2.5 milliamp, and then this one's one of the older milliamp hour batteries or amp hour battery. So, uh, you know, comparison, like I said, triggers pretty much the same. The handle's pretty much the same outside of, you know, just maybe deeper grooves cut into it. This one is a little worn out because, like I said, I've had been using this one for about a year and a half. But they got this other little design in the front. I don't know if you guys are picking that up here. This one doesn't have it. You know, not like that matters. But, uh, you know, just another thing I don't like about this one. You know, failed. It's, it still works and I still use it. But, uh, you know. I never like it. I don't like to use it. You know, that's why I picked up the Milwaukee grinder. You know, I was excited about the Milwaukee grinder. That one, maybe we'll do a review on. I got a couple, uh, you know, cons on the, even the Milwaukee grinder. But for the most part, you know, this is probably going to replace it for now. But getting to the speeds, you could definitely tell the difference between brushless and non-brushless. If you guys are picking that one up, here's the 761. You know, you could hear, hear it. Here's the uh, 861 probably starts off a little slower this one is broken in like i said i've only been using this one for two days but you could definitely tell the difference they're both on one kick it up to two spins up a lot faster and that one too Holding it in your hand, this one, you know, seems like it's spinning faster. They're obviously spinning the same, but I'm guessing, you know, obviously more vibration, more heat, more friction going on in the side of this one, as opposed to this one, you know, with a brushless motor and just fans running inside there. It's going to be less vibration in the brushless one. There, side by side, guys, we'll get a little tape measure. And I guess when we measure this, we'll measure it, you know, from the workstation, maybe up to the highest point here. This one pretty much comes in probably eight and an eighth and then this one's coming in probably eight so i think the angle's a little different on there i can't really tell it's uh probably a little different in height i don't know if you guys are catching that but if you look on the side not that it matters but 
you know, the older vi version does stick up a little higher there, probably because, you know, they changed the angle a little bit. This is what I'm guessing there. Um, you know, this one's probably angled up a bit more with a high point. This one's probably angled down a little bit more. But none of that really matters. For the most part, you know, the only thing that's bigger is obviously the base of it, you could see, and the length of it. So not like that's gonna matter. This one still should fit in those tighter areas just like this one. You know, pretty much if this one fit, this one's probably gonna fit outside of, you know, the length of it being longer. That's the one distinguished thing. The pad's gonna stick out more with the brushless one. But we'll get down, uh, like I said, guys, I'm pretty sure you guys know this one. I'm pretty sure there's videos out, pros and cons on the older version. You know, what they can handle, what they can't handle. You know, for me, you want my opinion, this thing really can't handle any long-term use and things like that especially for polishing you know you think polishing you're running that thing for a while even if you're polishing a headlight or something the glaze off a headlight you know it's probably not even enough to do that before this thing starts to get hot turn off or burn out batteries and and when i say get hot is hot is you know melt melting the inside i think that's what happened to my other one and it seized up or just batteries going dead or it getting too hot to hold so but i'm gonna get a rotor set up we're gonna put this one through the ringer real quick show you guys what this one's all about here all right, so we got a little setup here. Just gonna do it on the, uh, the cart here. Got the new version, pretty much what I'm gonna do is just maybe clean off some of this rust with this cookie on here. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of push extra hard, see if this thing cuts off, see how it handles, maybe some abuse, things like that. So, so what we'll do is we'll start off on one, 30, the 3500 RPM and uh, see what we got here. You can definitely see, you know, it's definitely cutting through whatever rust is on this rotor. And I am pushing it kind of hard, but you know, we got a brand new cookie on here. So something definitely expected. I'm gonna give it a little more here, see if I can maybe get this thing to stall out. And it, it just keeps going. So that, that's definitely cool. And that's something I tested, you know, the first day. Obviously, I opened a tool. If this tool is going to break, I'd rather break first day so I could bring it to the snap-on guy and tell him it's junk. But, you know, I definitely did test that already, so I knew that was going to do it. So maybe now I'm going to put on a little mass, and then we're just going to keep going, maybe check battery, see if the battery dies out. Got time to do that or see where we're at. You know, obviously with a fully charged battery on green. We'll clean up this whole rotor, check the battery again, see if it gets hot or anything like that. All right, so we probably ran that for a little over a minute. Let's check the temperature on it. I don't know if you guys are seeing that, but you know, it looks like right there in the center of it, you can see it's hot, it's point, and the tip of it where the friction was, but what do we got? 75 Fahrenheit. Hope you guys are seeing that on the camera there. Now what we'll do, we'll do the same thing with the 761 version. Maybe run this thing. I'll keep, I'll keep the uh, thermal imager in my hand. We'll run this thing for a little over a minute, and we'll check the temperature on this one. I'll show you guys how hot this one gets. Make sure to keep it on one. Alright, it seems to be about a minute. I could definitely feel it getting a little warm. Probably not too warm. Get the thermal image here. And you can see what the area where this one gets hot, you know, is kind of where the web of your hand would be, you know, right at the base there. But uh, around the same temperature, not too bad. That's on setting one. Probably ran for about the same amount of time. A little bit warmer, but you could definitely tell the heat displacement there where the motor is. We're gonna kick these things up to two and see what they can handle. So we'll go back to the brushless one. Just keep on grinding away. Put it on two, run this thing for maybe a minute. All right guys, I felt like it was a minute. I don't know, maybe I should get a stopwatch. Like we're getting scientific with this though. All right, let's see where we're at. 
there we go. So right in the middle there, we got up to about 91 on high speed. On setting two, you guys can see that. But I could already tell, you know, where the heat displacement is on this one, it's nowhere near where you're holding it. You know, so the web of your hand, you know, this hottest part is not where your hand would be. So it still gets warm, but, you know, not as warm as that one does. You know, we'll, we'll take that one to the max here. I'll show you how hot that one actually gets if the battery doesn't die out before that. So not too bad. And, and I got to say, while I'm doing this, you know, I'm, I'm pushing down on it pretty hard. And I don't know if you guys can tell, you know, when it gets kind of out of control because I'm using one hand and holding the imager with the other hand. I'm going to do the same to this one. And you guys can probably hear it, you know, when it starts to stall out. Like the, uh, you know, like the motor's going to cut out or something or it's going to fly out of my hand, whatever happens first. So we'll run this one on two. We'll see how hot this one gets running it for another minute on setting two. And as I'm doing it, you guys can tell, you know, me pushing down on it, you know, it does stall out. This thing definitely stalls out. So. See, there it goes again, stalling out. I'm still holding the trigger. Release it, hit it, it'll start going again. And I can't tell if the battery's dead, but obviously these were both fully charged batteries when we started. All right, there we go. Put the temperature here. So not too bad. A little over 100. 106 maybe at the high point. But, you know, definitely enough to feel in the hand. Definitely enough to, you know, get hot. And, of course, you keep on running that thing. It only just keeps getting hotter. So uh, I figure another cool, pretty cool thing we could test is what I'll do is I'll just sit at, run at these for a bit. You know, I'll probably edit through this a little bit. But, you know, Try to run these batteries down a little bit. I'm gonna start off with, uh, you know, the older version, the 761 version. Just kind of go at this with both hands. You know, run the battery down a little bit. We'll see, uh, you know, how long it takes for the battery to die. You know, I don't have all day, guys. You know, but I kind of want to put this in a video. Uh, I do know this one, you know, stalls out when the batteries it gets too hot and the battery starts to die out. This thing does stall out a lot. We're gonna kind of see if the newer version does that. But I will start off with the older version here. You guys could already tell here, you know, just going at this, it's, it's, I'm not even pushing that hard. It's already stalling out, probably from the heat. You know, you could definitely feel up here, it's, it's definitely getting hot now that we keep on running it continuously. But we'll just keep going until maybe it don't work anymore or it just completely cuts out. Cut out again there. And I think maybe that was it for the battery. Up. Oh. All right, there it goes. Maybe not. So it's just kind of working when it wants here, guys. You can see the trigger's pulled. Nothing happened in there. Maybe the battery. So the battery's probably dead there. Or the gun's dead. All right, so that one might be dead. We'll check that. But let's run this one for a while. I still feel a little bit of heat on this one. Definitely more in this area. We'll just go at this for a little bit and see what happens here. Alright guys, we we'll go back by the workstation, maybe check the volts on these batteries. What I'm guessing with this one, you know, it's either the dead battery or the, you know, the safety, the safety chip is, you know, disabling it is what I'm guessing, maybe from the heat. But uh, let's get these batteries out and see where we're at voltage wise. All right, guys. So we got to remember too, you know, we do have the 2.0 amp hour in the older one and we got the 2.5 in this one. So I wasn't expecting the batteries to die out and, you know, either one of them. But, you know, we're kind of not going off of that. You can't say it's uh, apples to apples comparison video anyways because we're comparing a brushless to a non-brushless. You know, maybe something better would be comparing this uh, Snap-on's brushless to the Milwaukee brushless or something. Maybe we can do that in another video. But checking the battery here, see where we're at with voltage. And we could only check, you know, one side at a time. So obviously this being a 14.4, you know, 7.2 and 7.2 
we'll check one side at a time so you guys could get a screen check the screen here you guys could see that if I can get in here so we've got 7.5 7.5 on this one, which is still a fully charged battery in my eyes. And then we'll check the older one. The battery even feels a little warm here. We'll see if this battery is just dead or if we, uh, you know, finally ruin the grinder here. If the grinder is just dead. And then this one we're at 5.8 and 5.9. So still a little bit of juice left in this battery. And there you go, as the temperature drops, it starts working again with the same battery. So yeah, it is a, a heat cutoff, obviously, with the little chip. If you guys caught that video of me, uh, you know, building those batteries, they do have a safety chip inside here. So obviously the temper is going to shut down the, the tool for, uh, you know, to not melt it or try not to get it hot. But this is definitely one of Snap-on's 14-4 line that gets hot. You know, this is probably the, the worst one out of all of them, but I, I don't own them all, so I don't know. But quick comparison on the two of these, you know, obviously if you're in the market for something like this, you know, you know, my, my experience and you guys want my advice, you know, definitely don't buy something like this from Snap-on. You know, I, I don't even know if they're still selling these. I really doubt it. I'm sure most of the people out there know that, you know, although at first, you know, it's nice, it's nice to have, it's better than nothing, sometimes better than using air, but you know, for the price, that's probably why they ran with this polisher, you know, the first 14-4 polisher line that they came out with was the polisher because, you know, their first version just sucked, you know, definitely sucked. Um, you guys leave a comment if you agree with me on that one. If you do own the older CTPP 761 because they are, they were terrible. This uh, 861 definitely seems like it's going to be able to hold up. And like I had mentioned, maybe we can compare this to uh, Milwaukee's brush list, you know, do a head-to-head -head comparison on that. You guys give me some ideas down in the comment section if you guys like to see that. But I'm going to wrap this one up. All right, so wrapping this one up, guys. You guys know my thoughts on these. You guys know how I feel about the old version. You know, it, it's probably my hated tool. My most hated 14.4 tool that Snap-on has. That's, I was so quick and eager to jump on this one as soon as they came out. I knew they were coming out. I told my guy, you know, make sure he gets me one. Great that I could put a video out on it. For the most part, it seems pretty nice, but only time will tell on these tools. Like I said, guys, you know, this ain't a long-term review or anything like that. I stated in the beginning of the video, you know, I've only had this a couple days. You know, that's why I like to kind of run these comparisons. And buying a new tool, I'd rather abuse it and put it through the ringer the first couple days of having it because if something happens to the tool or it fails or something like that, you know, it's, it's under warranty. So the most of this tool's life, it's gonna be worked hard while it's still under warranty, as opposed to something like this, where at this point, if it burns out, it burns out. I have replacements, it is what it is, but this one's not covered under warranty anymore. So, you know, I, I tend to take care of older tools more because sometimes you can't replace them if you still wanna use them, other reasons like that, but I take care of all my tools anyways because that's what makes me money, that's, you, you know, you take care of what you got so you don't have to constantly replace it and all that stuff. But not an Apple Apples comparison, but there it is. You know, the old version, brush version compared to the brushless version. Like I said, guys, you guys let me know down in the comments if you want to see me compare this one to Milwaukee's grinder. Um, I do have two of these. In recent days, you know, I haven't used them too much. You know, I, I did that a, a adapter video. You know, I do notice with these, if you don't have a well-balanced adapter on uh, the Milwaukee grinder, they do shut down and they shut down often. You know, it's kind of tedious using it. You know, you'll have to have a perfect balance adapter, whatever you're using well. It's a cutoff. You know, they don't recommend a lot, but even the two-inch Rolox, if it's not perfectly balanced and you're using it, it will shut off. The wire wheels don't work. You know, I explained all that in the video. You guys can see, maybe I'll put it down in the thumbnail or somewhere at the top or whatever. I'm sure most of you guys caught that video. If you haven't, check out the channel. Make sure you catch that video on it. But uh, my feelings have changed about it. You know, it's a great tool, but longevity and being a universal tool, being able to use all the adapters that you want to use on it, not so much. You know, the safety feature cuts it off way too often and... Uh, it's kind of a pain. It's a pain. So we'll see what this one does. Maybe this will be my go-to. We'll see what kind of adapters this thing can handle, all that good stuff. And I'll, you know, I'll report back to you guys. But go ahead and wrap this one up, guys. As always, like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. 
and we will catch you in the next one. Signing out.